This is a curve representing lean muscle mass gain on consuming 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram body weight over a period of 16 weeks. And this curve represents muscle gains when the study group consumed 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram body weight over the same time frame. This basically shows that muscle gains were increased by more than 50% when the protein intake were doubled by the baseline values. Now to consume this much protein from natural food sources, you would have to eat a lot of protein rich foods daily. To put things into perspective, to get 150 grams of protein, you would have to eat 12 egg whites, 200 grams of chicken breast, 1 cup of Greek yogurt, 100 grams of salmon and 250 grams of cottage cheese, which is doable but eating so much on a daily basis gets difficult for most people. This is where the role of protein supplements comes in, especially whey protein. Now if you're watching this video, you probably already consume whey protein. I mean that's why you're here, right? You want to know more about this protein powder that you consume so passionately every day after hitting the gym. But have you ever wondered what is whey protein and how is it made? Have you ever thought about how whey protein makes our muscles grow? Hello and welcome to Med Simplified. I'm Dr. Umar Malik and in this video, we'll take a deep dive into the science of whey protein. We'll try to understand what is whey protein, how is it made and why is it so important if you want to gain muscle mass. So whether you are a beginner or a seasoned pro, this video will take your knowledge about whey protein to a whole next level. So without wasting your time any further, let's first try to understand how whey protein is made. While researching this topic, I discovered a fact that really surprised me a lot. It takes 200 liters of milk to make just 1 kg of whey protein. That's a lot of milk. Now milk is made of two main types of proteins, casein which doesn't dissolve very well in water and whey which dissolves in water easily. When milk is processed to make cheese, it undergoes separation into two components, curds and liquid. The liquid left over from this process contains whey protein. This liquid gold once processed further is transformed into the whey protein powder we all know and love. The production of whey protein can be divided into five main phases pasteurization, separation, filtration, drying, and final processing. The journey of making whey protein begins with pasteurization of milk. Pasteurization is a process by which all the bacteria and other germs in the milk are killed. Milk is first heated to over 100 degrees Celsius and then rapidly cooled to 4 degrees. Like I told you earlier, milk contains two main types of proteins, casein and whey. Usually they are in the ratio of 80 to 20, meaning 80% casein and 20% whey. During the separation phase, the aim is to separate casein from whey. To achieve this, an enzyme known as chymosin is added to the milk. The casein proteins in the milk are present in the form of micelles which look something like this. Chymosin breaks the chemical bonds in these micelles which destabilizes its structure. This causes clumping of these micelles which aggregate together and start to settle down at the bottom. The liquid part that is left on the top is the one we are mainly concerned with and it is none other than the whey protein. This liquid is separated and sent to the next stage of production which is phase of filtration. Basically, the liquid whey that we just separated also contains other components like carbohydrates, fats and additional solids which need to be filtered out so as to get pure whey protein. Now there are two main mechanisms that are used for filtration. Membrane filtration and ion exchange. Let's simplify these. Membrane filtration process uses special membranes with small pores to separate different components in whey based upon their size. Depending upon the pore size of the membranes, we can have microfiltration, ultrafiltration and nanofiltration. When liquid whey is passed through the microfiltration membranes, 
most fat and lactose from the liquid are removed and the resulting product is the base of whey protein concentrate. The process of ultrafiltration is done if whey protein isolate has to be produced. This removes all the lactose and makes the protein content of the whey highly concentrated. Nanofiltration reduces the mineral content of the whey, especially sodium and potassium chlorides. The filtration phase is crucial for obtaining high quality whey products with desired characteristics. It removes impurities, concentrates valuable components like proteins and achieves the desired composition of whey. The other method used for filtration is the ion exchange method in which the pH levels of the liquid whey are first changed by adding a chemical agent and then different components of the whey are separated depending upon their surface charge rather than their size. First, chemical agents such as hydrochloric acid or sodium hydroxide are added which adjusts the pH and the electrical charge on the proteins making them negatively or positively charged. The liquid whey is then passed through a tube-like structure which contains an anionic membrane and a cationic membrane. The anion exchange membranes are positively charged so all the negatively charged proteins in the whey like beta-lactoglobulin, alpha-lactalbumin and bovine serum albumin get attached to the anionic membrane. Similarly, the opposite membrane is known as the cation exchange membrane which is negatively charged and attracts lactoferrin and lactoperoxidase since they are positively charged proteins. If you don't understand all these names, don't worry yet. We will discuss about these subfractions of whey later in this video. So, when the liquid whey is passed through this tube containing these ion exchangers, the protein sticks to these membranes but the carbs and fats pass through. What is left in the end is a product which is very high in protein with little to no fats or carbs. Ion exchange process is relatively inexpensive as compared to membrane filtration, but it has its drawbacks. After filtration comes the next phase of drying. The high protein liquid whey is put into an air dryer and under the influence of hot and cold air, the water is rapidly removed. After this, we get the raw whey protein powder which moves to the next step of final processing where flavoring agents and other nutrients are added. So this was how whey protein is made. But what makes whey protein truly remarkable and unique? Let's dive into the biochemistry of whey protein and try to understand how it leads to muscle growth and hypertrophy. Whey is a complex mixture of different protein subfractions, each with its own unique properties and functions. The main subfraction present in whey protein is beta-lactoglobulin which makes up about 50% of the total whey protein content. Beta-lactoglobulin is easily digested and contains all the essential amino acids that are important for muscle growth and repair. 20% of whey is composed of alpha-lactalbumin, which is considered a high-quality protein due to its essential amino acid content, good digestibility and absorption. Alpha-lactalbumin contains a rich source of essential amino acids including lysine, tryptophan and cysteine. It is particularly high in tryptophan an amino acid that is a precursor to serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter involved in mood regulation. Alpha-lactalbumin possesses several bioactive properties that also contribute to its health benefits. It is known for its antimicrobial and immunity-boosting effects, supporting the body's defense against infections. It also promotes gut health and has anti-inflammatory properties. Another subfraction present in whey are the immunoglobulins, which are also known as antibodies and they are a crucial part of the immune system. They make up a small percentage of whey protein but are highly important for their immune boosting properties. Bovine serum albumin and glycomacropeptide are some other subfractions present in whey protein. So this was about the biochemistry of whey protein. Now let's look at how whey protein acts in our body. 
So when we consume whey protein, its journey begins in our digestive system. It is rapidly digested and broken down into individual amino acids. These amino acids are then absorbed into the bloodstream, where they are transported to various tissues throughout our body, including the muscles. Once in the muscles, the amino acids from whey protein play a crucial role in stimulating muscle protein synthesis. This process involves the creation of new muscle proteins, leading to muscle repair and growth. Among all the essential amino acids, leucine plays a key role in triggering muscle protein synthesis and whey protein has a rich content of leucine. Leucine acts as a powerful signal for muscle growth, activating the MTOR pathway and initiating the process of muscle protein synthesis. In fact, studies have shown that whey protein stimulates muscle protein synthesis to a greater extent compared to other protein sources. Its rapid digestion and high leucine content makes it an optimal choice for maximizing muscle growth. Intense exercise leads to muscle damage at the microscopic level, and consuming whey protein after a workout helps to provide the necessary amino acids for muscle repair and reduces muscle soreness. Furthermore, whey has a high biological value, meaning that it contains a well-balanced profile of essential amino acids that our bodies can effectively utilize. In addition to its effects on muscle, it also influences satiety and weight management. Protein is known to be more satiating than carbohydrates or fats, and whey, with its high protein content, promotes feelings of fullness and reduces overall calorie intake. This can be very beneficial for individuals aiming to manage or lose weight. Moreover, it has been shown to have a positive impact on metabolic health as well. It can improve insulin sensitivity, which is crucial for regulating blood sugar levels and preventing the development of insulin resistance. Now, one of the most common questions people have regarding whey protein is when to consume it, as it is a common belief that whey protein should be taken immediately after hitting the gym. However, recent studies have suggested that the timing of protein intake may not be as critical as once believed. Studies have shown that the body has a prolonged period of high muscle protein synthesis following a heavy workout, rather than a narrow window of opportunity immediately after a workout. This means that as long as you are meeting your overall daily protein needs, the timing of protein consumption is not as crucial as previously thought. Instead of fixating on consuming protein within a specific time frame, it's more important to focus on distributing your protein intake evenly throughout the day. This allows for a steady supply of amino acids to be available for muscle repair and growth. So rather than stressing about consuming a protein shake immediately post-workout, you can incorporate whey protein into your daily routine as a part of balanced meals and snacks. Thanks for joining us on this fascinating journey into the science of whey protein. I hope you liked the video. If you found this video helpful, I humbly request you to support our channel on patreon.com slash medsimplified. We typically don't work with sponsors, but making these videos requires a lot of research, writing and animations, which all cost us money. So now you can help us improve our content with just a small donation on our Patreon page. As a token of appreciation, Patreon offers exclusive perks to our valued supporters, such as early access to videos, behind the scenes content and the opportunity to suggest topics for future videos. You can find the link to our Patreon page in the description box down below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more science-backed fitness content. And as always, stay healthy, stay curious.